out the way Who got a watch, who got the time, I'm raising the clock Even in my feelings, grind don't stop Got big dreams, want big rocks I got plans, who got talk Heard it's real cheap, but it's really gold cost I'm trying to get these ends Building buyers with my friends I'm about handling my business Not TV Everything I say in this video is alleged. It is in my opinion, and it is for entertainment purposes only. Hello, YouTube family. It's DeMarie TV. Please like, comment, and subscribe to the video, you guys. I'm new to YouTube. Every like and subscribe that I get, it helps me get higher in the algorithm. And I always forget to ask you guys in the front of the video, and I wait till the end, and I miss it. <laughs> so would you please do me a huge favor? and like the video and subscribe to the channel. Here we go. Hey, DeMarie TV family. So I'm coming to you uh, for a recap of season 25, episode eight of Big Brother. And then I'll also give you guys some updates on some of the things that have been happening with the live feeds. So essentially when the episode eight starts, it starts with them, it leaves off where Raleigh has been evicted and the handfuls are really upset. Like. Matt is crying, you know. Jack and Blue are super depressed. Uh, Blue is in the confessional crying. She's really upset. I think Riley really um, was able to coalesce this group together and she was a very strong leader for this group. I think that a lot of them depended on Riley and her thinking and her strategy for their game. And I feel like without Riley being there, they just are kind of discombobulated a bit you know they're they're trying to figure out how they reform and get back together without Riley and I'm not so sure that that's going to be so easy when you have strong players such as Sari, Cameron, Hysom you know even America is showing up to be somewhat strong and they're trying to kind of look at the game in a different way and may end up putting some other people together to form new alliances. We'll see how that goes, but it is, this is, it's a lot of shakeup and a lot of movement happening. So we'll see how that goes. Hysom is the head of household. He's the one who's going to be hosting the head of household. He can't play because he was head of household last week and they're going to be playing a game so as you guys know, because Riley's just been evicted, the next thing that we're going to do is play the head of household competition. It's, it's uh, not a winner. And this competition is about um, trying to put a ball down into uh, these, it's like uh, putting a ball down into these very narrow columns that have numbers on them. Whoever puts the ball in the highest number wins the game. It's a very simple challenge. Um, it has nothing to do with physical fitness. It's just your accuracy in how you put the ball and if you're able to get it in the hole with the highest number. So Hysom is hosting this challenge because he was, of course, head of household last week. And as everyone gets up to putt, they're engaged in the game. Everybody's like having a really good time. But it turns out that Miss Felicia is the winner of this game. She ends up putting the ball 53, and that's the highest number. And she becomes the HOH for the upcoming week. Now, this is in the Humiliverse. So a part of this game is humiliation. So throughout, <laughs> after she wins, they tell her that she has to get snotted on as a part of the game for the next 24 hours. And as she gets snotted on, she has to bring another contestant up with her to get snotted on. So it's just basically a bunch of goo that the nose snots out on them. It covers them with goo. They're soaked, they're wet. And so immediately she gets snotted when she wins the game. And the snots continue to happen at crazy times over the next 24 hours. And I mean crazy times. It, she's getting snotted like at three in the morning. And she drags Jag with her. She gets snotted with Matt. She gets like she gets snotted with Blue. Like she gets snotted multiple times over the next 24 hours. And the final snot comes during her uh, nomination ceremony, right before she speaks at the nomination ceremony, she gets the notification that she has to go out and get snotted as the final snot. 
and she takes uh, Corey with her on that one. So prior to the nomination ceremony taking place, her and Corey have to exit. They'll go out, they get snotted, and then she comes back in to continue uh, the nomination ceremony. So after Felicia wins the nomination, or after Felicia wins the HOH competition, immediately you see Hysom come into the uh, Bye Bye Bitches room with Sari, Izzy, and Boy. And they're just playing along like, oh, they're so happy that, you know, Miss Felicia won and they're going to, you know, have the power and hide some safe and they're going to nominate two of the handfuls up for elimination. And really, Sari, Miss Felicia, Izzy, no, really, Sari and Izzy have decided that they want Hysom out. And they're going to speak with Miss Felicia to try to get her to nominate Hysom. Matt is speaking with America. He's really upset. He's crying a lot. You know, he's really upset that Raleigh is off. And I think that's kind of a multi-layered thing. I think that, yes, he and Raleigh were starting to spark up a relationship that was his main um, person in the house. But also Riley went out of her way to make sure that Matt understood and knew everything that was happening in the game. Remember, he's deaf and he has um, issue understanding big group conversations. So Riley would always make sure that he had a full understanding of what was going on in the game and she kept him abreast of everything, which I think is really cool. So I think he's kind of worried that that Riley has left and he may not have someone to do that for him moving forward. So I think that is contributing to him being upset. So then um, you see Sari and Izzy, they're going to work. You know, these two are working <laughs> overtime to strategize how this game is moving. And I really enjoy their dynamic. I, I think that it's great how they work together. I think it's very smart for them to try to get Hysom out. And their theory is, if Miss Felicia puts up Jag and Cameron, they will fight super hard in the power of veto competition to get themselves off the block. When they do so, then they'll be able to backdoor Hysom. And in the event that they are not able to take themselves off, then one of them will leave the house. So they're going to be Hysom and Cameron are going to be, they're going to try to convince Felicia to put them up. And then if one of them takes themselves off, Hysom can go up, the whole house can blindside him because the house has had enough of Hysom and his shenanigans. So then you see Izzy and Sari go up to Miss Felicia's HOA room and they go to work. They immediately get her on board. They tell her what they're thinking about getting Hysom out, which everybody is ready to do. Hysom did way too much, way too much on Riley's eviction. He showed himself to just be abrasive, overbearing, controlling, and nobody wants to deal with that. So the handfuls and the bye-bye bitches and most of the professors are on board with getting Hysom out of the house. So... Sari and Izzy take this to Miss Felicia and Miss Felicia's on board. So the next step is Miss Felicia telling Jag and Cameron of her intention to put them on the block. Something tells me that Miss Felicia, she has a mind of her own. Sometimes the way that she looks at Sari, I think that she could just be me, but I just feel that she looks at her with the level of skepticism. I don't know that she fully trusts Sari. I think she's riding the Sari wave because she knows that Sari gets to the end of the game, but I don't think she fully trusts her. Let me know if you guys believe me or if you, or if you guys think the same way that I do. I don't know why I feel that way, but that's just what I get when they are communicating. It's the way that she looks at her. Sometimes I feel like she's playing a role like everybody thinks that she's not as intelligent as she is, but I think she is smarter than what she's letting on. I don't know. It could just be me, but let me know what you think about that. So Miss Felicia, they're doing the snots periodically throughout the episodes, right? So they're having snot sessions where Felicia has to go out and has to get snot dumped out on her. And so this is happening throughout the episodes. But after the next snot session, she is, you're going to see Jared 
and you're going to see Blue continue their, I guess you want to call it a showman's. I, what you're going to see next is <laughs> Hysam go up to the HOH room and he's talking to Miss Felicia and he's doing what Hysam does. He's over talking her. He's answering his own questions. He's speaking as if he is the HOH and he's not. And this is exactly why everybody wants him out of the house, but that's what he does with her. He's telling her what she should do, what she should think, how she should move. And it's just, it just does not go well. He has no clue that he is the target and hopefully it stays that way. Cause if he figures out or he gets any inkling that they are trying to get him out of the house, he is going to fight like a caged animal. And I believe he could turn some of the younger people. So hopefully he doesn't get wind of what they're planning and everything stays like this and he's able to be blindsided. So then it goes to Jared and Blue. This is not a showman that I like at all. I do not understand why Jared is getting himself into this position with Blue, but it's flourishing. They're finding little spaces to, you know, talk and have time alone. He, Jared and his pillow talk is going to get him in trouble. What you do not see on the show and they played on the live, or you saw on the live feed was that Jared is starting to drop little hints to Blue that he knows a secret, a, some, a secret that's in the house. And eventually if he keeps pillow talking with her, she's going to figure out what he's talking about. But as the show progresses, they tend to get closer. She comes in, she's giving him hugs at night. They're sitting really close next to each other on the couch. Even Hysam, as he's walking by to them, he makes a comment about how cute they look, you know? And other people are commenting about this relationship that they see forming. I think Jared has enough going on trying to maintain the secret that he and Sari are mother and son. I 100% think this is a bad move because what it's gonna do is cause people to want them to split up because they're gonna feel like them being paired together is power, which is gonna make it harder for Sari to defend him. But he's young. Now, and this is a really cool scene to me. It's Felicia and it's Izzy, or not Felicia, it's, it's Sari and it's Izzy. This is a really cool scene. Sari, Izzy, and Matt are outside talking and Matt is explaining to him about him being deaf and the, some of the struggles that he went through growing up with him being deaf and trying to have self-esteem and build relationships. And he also um, expresses to them some of his struggles with being able to understand group speak. And they both were very receptive and understanding of that. I thought it was a really good moment and hopefully they will step into that space that was a void for him um, when Riley left and they'll, you know, pay attention to, you know, the way they speak someone following up with him after the group conversations and just keeping him abreast on what's going on in the game. He's not a part of the professors, but I think this is going to split up once they get Hysam off. I think now that everybody's talking a little bit more, starting to build relationships with more of each, with each other and they're not so hard lined as they were when it was the handfuls and the professors, I think some of these relationships are going to shift and we're gonna get new alliances out of that. Um, Sari was speaking about the fact that she's 50 something years old and she has not ever considered what it would be like to not have the fully functions of all of your senses and you know just not being able to hear. So I think that that gives them a new ap appreciation for the game that he's playing. And I would definitely like to see some shakeups amongst the alliances and see some of the stronger players move together to get the weaker players out. That's just the way that I think. I feel like Izzy, Felicia, Sari, Matt, Jag, Jared are all like, those are the people that I would like to see kind of pick the others off. <laughs> well, we'll see how it goes. But to me, that would be kind of cool. I would just like to see them pick the others off. I think Red can be really strong. So I would like to see him go because I don't like the idea of just sitting in the house and laying low and then being able to pop up and play later because nobody 
figured you out. I don't really like that gameplay. Cameron is super strong. I feel like Cameron though will go against the bye bye bitches. So I want Cameron out for that reason. America, Corey, Blue. And honestly, if Jared was not Ceri's son, he could go as well because I just don't see them being strong game players. I guess Jared is playing a strong game because he's trying to keep the secret, but he's actually telling it. And I think at some point his mom's gonna have to unhitch him so that she can survive in the game. We'll see how that goes as well. So Miss Felicia brings up Cameron and she tells him her plan. He's really not for it. He's telling her, listen, I think that by putting me up two weeks in a row, you're gonna that's gonna raise a red flag for Hysom. He doesn't really believe that. He's just saying that because he's trying to convince her not to put him up anyway, because that's the plan that she's come to with the Bye Bye Bitches, and that is what they think is the best blind side for Hysom. Now, will this stay a secret? I don't know. And the final scene is the nomination ceremony. And right before the nomination ceremony, Miss Felicia and Corey have to go out and get snotted. Then they come back and she, Felicia does exactly what the Bye Bye Bitches have planned. She nominates Jack and she nominates Cameron. And that's how this episode ends. I think this was a great uh, strategy. Hopefully it will work. I will say the live feeds following this episode and the day prior to this episode were all over the place. These Cameron and Red were uh, discussing the plot to get Heisem out. Problem is the Bye Bye Bitches and the professors did not tell Red about the plan, which then sends Red back over to them and he pretends that he's asking them what's going on like he doesn't know, but he does know and Sari picks up on it like that. Sari has been playing these games for a very long time. She just won Traitors. So Sari can really figure out when somebody's blowing smoke up her ass. So she figured that out. So they thought about changing the plan, voting out red. I mean, they went through a bunch of scenarios on the first night that it was, it was all over the place. When, if you're not watching these live feeds, you really need to be watching it to keep up with everything that's going on in the house. But after the episode happened on Sunday, it seems to have calmed down a bit in the house and everybody's back on board with getting Hysom out. Um, so we shall see how this goes. This is, it's a long time till Wednesday. I'm telling you a lot goes on in that house. So come Wednesday, if they're able to stick to this plan, I will be highly impressed because they sit there, they stir, they just get themselves all wound up about things. And they, it's very hard for this group of people to stay focused for any amount of time. <laughs> they really get themselves worked all up and their strategies change over and over again. But hopefully they will stick to this plan and get Hysom out. That's what I'm hoping. What do you think? Drop me some comments below, share the video, like the video, and please subscribe to the channel. I'm new to YouTube. Any subscription that I get helps me grow my channel and I appreciate all of you. Uh, when you get a chance, watch the live feeds, just even for a little bit. I think it'll better give you an understanding of people's gameplay. And then I will follow up with you guys after Wednesday's episode. And hopefully, hopefully the power of veto is not going to Hysom. Because <laughs> if it does, it totally changes the plans. But for now, the plan is to get Hysom out. And I'm, I'm with it. I'm 100% on board with that. I'll see you guys soon. Have a good day. Get out the way. Who got a watch? Who got the time? I'm raising the clock. Even if my feelings grind, don't stop. Got big dreams.